Jesus glad and the devil mad. Amen. Let's rejoice. Let's lift our Bibles up, wave them around, make Jesus glad and the devil mad. Say this together. Say, Heavenly Father, I do honor you today. Uh, every good and perfect gift that I have received has come down from above from you, my Father of light. You illuminate me today. You light the way before me. I don't walk in darkness. I walk in the light of life in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Let's turn in our Bibles to three places, Revelation tw chapter 12. That's what I said, Revelation, amen. How many of you ever, ever read the book of Revelation? See, you're blessed. The Bible says if you read it, then you know, you're blessed. Revelation 12, and then also uh, <clears throat> Ephesians 6, those two places. And Luke 21, we'll say for last. Uh, Revelation 12, we'll start reading with verse 7. And there was war in heaven. See, that's pretty shocking, isn't it? We don't think about a he heaven as a place of war, but there, at one point there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. We find out later that about a third of the angels had sided with Lucifer in this war and prevailed not. The dragon prevailed not. The third of the angels that rebelled re prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth 49.8% of the world. No, the whole world. Everybody say the devil's deceiver. So he deceives the whole world. He was cast out into where? The earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Not too good a place to be, the earth. The devil and a third of the angels are here. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they, who's they? The, the brethren that were accused. They, everybody say, that's me. That's me. Overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Great wrath. All right, and then let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6. How many of you know all these verses are written to the church? Book of Revelation was given to the uh, seven churches uh, in Asia Minor. God, you know, Jesus told, told uh, John on the Isle of Potmos, write all these things down and, and put it in a letter to the seven churches. God doesn't want us ignorant about the devil. He doesn't want us ignorant about the deceiver. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren. See, I like that word finally because it wraps up everything that the book of Ephesians had said in chapters 1 through the first part of 6. Finally, in result of everything I've told you, Ephesians and us, be strong in your own constitution. Be strong. No, in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, the entire armor, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
Wiles literally means trickery, craft, deceit. If we're going to stand against deception we're, and, and trickery and craft and deceit, we're going to have to do it clothed in the armor of God, and we're going to have to do it in the strength that Jesus gives us. Are y'all with us now? All right, and then Luke 21, 8, you don't necessarily have to turn there, but Jesus told his disciples, they asked him, you know, when are the signs of your coming or your glorious appearing? What are the signs? What are we going to be looking for? They thought he was coming in their generation. They didn't know the whole Bible then. The Bible is progressive revelation, but they lived as if Jesus could come at any moment. That's the way we ought to live. Instead of worrying about the clock or the calendar, we ought to be living the life that we think we should live as if Jesus is coming at any moment for the church. What are the signs of your coming? And the first thing that Jesus said before he described those signs is, take heed that you be not deceived. Big, big importance right here. Take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, or they would say, as most people can't get by with that. So they'll just say, I'm anointed. Well, God sent me to you. Well, they're, they're, you know, Satan comes as an angel of light. Satan comes as a, I'm telling you, he can deceive you real easy. That's why I'm preaching this message. I'm preaching a message entitled Defeating Deception. Defeating Deception. We're surrounded by it. We just witnessed an entire world deceived over germ warfare and the UN and all the all of the letter agencies of America, you know, they all, con you know, you're, you're conspiracy theory. You bet I am. They lied through their teeth. Every bit of it was a lie. Not that the vi virus was real, but it was man-made, made old purpose and made to hurt us. And it hurt us. But it didn't have to hurt us as bad as it did if we'd have just followed the rules that we already know about, herd immunity. We've had that happen right here. We brought in doctors and we brought in experts to tell you the truth while it was going on so that people wouldn't think that we're crazy but no they've been deceived the whole satan was behind every bit of it and he's deceived the whole world this is a great example all you've got to do is get people afraid enough and they'll give up in order to stay safe they want to stay safe well there's no such thing Psalm 91 is the only way to stay safe. The blood of Jesus is the only one that, way to stay safe. <laughs> Walk it in the Spirit. According to the Holy Ghost is the only way to stay safe. Amen. So anyway, just defeating deception. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I brought this message a number of years ago. I was inspired by a quote from Billy Graham, a great, one of the great evangelists of our day. And uh, in his latter days, before he passed, a couple of years before he passed away, he said, it's time for Christians to stop underestimating the power of Satan to deceive. I thought that was interesting coming from a Southern Baptist. They don't teach about the devil in, in Baptist church. They don't teach about the devil anywhere except right here in a few other churches. I mean, Brother Hagin taught about the devil. Word of faith people teach about the devil. You know, we need to know who he is, and we, know, we need to know he exists. Did you know that most people that call themselves Christians in America don't believe that, that there is a devil? They think the devil is just an idea. It's a, it's a symbol of evil. Well, they couldn't be more wrong. It's a real person or an entity, not a person, but he's an entity. So uh, we're going to start a four-part series. I think it's going to be four-part. I you know, I'm going to take my liberty and decide whether to make it longer or shorter as we go. But uh, we're living in the end days. And there's war that moved from heaven down to earth. The war is here now. Well, I thought Jesus defeated. The, he did defeat the, the devil. There's no question about that. He's been defeated and every entity with him. But we are here to enforce the terms of his surrender. He's not surrendered. He still rules over the rest of the world. He's still deceiving them. So we're at war, folks. And he's boiling over with anger. Why? Because he knows he doesn't have very long. 
The word wrath means boiling over. It means passion, heat, anger. That, doesn't that describe these activists, these pro-abortion activists? They're so vile. These pro-transgender people that want to butcher our children and double dog dare us to object. They just get in your face and curse you and, and rip you up one side, that accuse you, accuse you. Why, are they, why do they accuse me of what they're guilty of? Because their father is the devil. And he is the father of lies. We're going to get into that in a little while. We're going to find out who he is. Well, I think I know well, yeah, but millions of other people don't know, and they're afraid to talk about the devil. They think if they don't talk about him, he'll go away. The opposite is true. You need to know your enemy. I said, you need to know your enemy. So, uh, a few years ago, I heard Billy Brim say this at one of her meetings. She said, no one has pastored a church in the end times until now. (laughs) Just ding, 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 ding. There's some things that I just didn't get from my, my earthly, my spiritual father, John Osteen. Others that I loved and sat under their ministries, people like, Oral Roberts and people like, you know, Kenneth Hagin. They, they knew about all these things, but no one has really lived in the age that we're living in right now. And there's never been a pastor that knew how to pastor a flock like this right now. We've got to include some things that in your, in your, ba- in your array of weapons. You've got to have some ammunition to live right now. We're at war, folks. And our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. You know, we have the right to carry. We have the right to carry. And I'm not talking about physical guns. I, you know, we have that too. But, you know, that's not going to be enough. We're going to have to have the supernatural weapons. Are you with me now? So, <clears throat> we, we, we just celebrated the... 79th anniversary of D-Day week before last and I would love to have preached this then but I just the timing didn't work out and I thought well I'm going to preach it anyway right around there because uh, D-Day is uh, is the Normandy invasion it was the greatest invasion military invasion in history in in the history of mankind and uh, it is a miracle that it was pulled off a lot of Young men and some women died. A lot of civilians died. But thank God more Nazis died. And they had to die. Demon possessed. Terrible what Hitler did and the Nazi party did to the youth of um, Germany. At the end of the war, just less than a year later, it ended. Less than a year after D-Day, uh, June the 6th, 1944, in May of 45 was Victory in Europe Day, VE Day. It was a momentous occasion. I mean, the whole world celebrated. And, uh, but a part of that invasion was deception. And really, when you study warfare, all warfare has deception involved. You cannot really win a war without some deception. You've got to pull off some tricks. And I'm telling you, the devil has lined up his trickery. He has lined up his way to rule. He thinks, he still thinks he's going to overthrow God. He still thinks he's going to win. So he's fighting like it, folks. He's fighting like it. And we, we better get it together. We better understand our enemy. We better understand his trickery. We better understand the way that he operates. I think about America, what we did, our allies, in order to deceive Hitler. What are we doing? Well, we're we're arrayed against, you know, a huge army, millions of soldiers. That's true. They were fighting Russia. They fought a a two-front war. Well, we did too. But we outfought them. We outmaneuvered them. We outdeceived them. So, you know, he was of the opinion that we would attack at the Pas de Calais, which is the narrowest place that 
the English Channel. That's because of history, and it's just because he just decided that that was what was going to happen. He was deluded. That was another thing through prayer. I'm, I'm convinced the church praying in America, God handed him over, Hitler, to a, a man completely insane, surrounded him with yes men. They didn't have the guts. And the ones that did have the guts to tell him the truth, they were all shot. His greatest general was killed and participated in one of the assassination attempts because he, was a, he, knew, he, he knew Germany was going to be ruined. Rommel. Rommel was his greatest hero. He was a mighty general, a, a, a courageous guy. He's fought, not fighting on the wrong side, but you have to give him credit. We knew all about him. But he could see the writing on the wall. He's a military man. He knew that wasn't going to be true. He knew they were coming in Normandy. And they, he, he begged Hitler, give me the panzers. I need the panzers. Oh, no, they're going to come across at the Pas de Calais. And that mistake gave us the victory. Well, you know what? We're going to outsmart the You know, the devil's not more powerful than God, and he's not smarter than the Holy Ghost. But he is smarter than us in our natural thinking. And so we need to know our enemies. You know, they knew all the generals. They, uh, the Germans knew everything. More, and you know what? They were convinced that George S. Patton was the greatest general, and they knew that he was going to lead the invasion. So Eisenhower, political guy that he was, he's not much of a military guy. He's a political guy gave Russia their heart, head start. I mean, him and FDR ruined this. They, they're the reason we have the Cold War. They, they empowered Russia. They gave Russia more weapons than they gave Britain. You really want to know the truth. Not heroes in my book. It was dumb. Because what, what did we have to fight? Well, as soon as we won the war, we had the Cold War. You have Russia. You still got Russia. Never would have had Russia. They were on the ropes. But anyway, getting back to deception, uh, we have to understand our enemy. They understood their enemy. We understood ours. We, do, we had intelligence on all their, all their generals. Yamamoto, we had intelligence on them. We knew when Yamamoto was flying in an airplane, we shot his plane down over the Pacific. Say so you gotta, you gotta know. You've gotta have some spies. You've gotta have some intelligence. You've gotta have. You, and when I say intelligence, I'm not talking about smarts. I'm talking about, you know, you've gotta have knowledge of the other side. You've gotta have spies. Well, we got the Holy Ghost. He knows everything. He knows whatever's going on in the devil's plans. We don't have to be victims and try to catch up with what the devil's doing. Are you with me now? So, uh, you know, we've gotta we. My aim is to teach you how to defeat deception. In order to defeat it, you've got to do what? You've got to recognize, expose, and disarm it. And then you can defeat it. You're not going to defeat it head on. You've got to defeat it by recognizing it first. Then you've got to expose it. A lot of people are, they don't want to do that. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. No, we've got to do it. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. We've got to expose deception disarm it, then we can defeat it. All right, so this week I'm going to talk about know your enemy. Know your enemy. That way you won't underestimate him. You won't underestimate. See, I'm telling you, they, they underestimated America. They thought America was weak. So did Japan. They thought America was a bunch of playboys. They thought we were soft. They thought we were just spoiled little boys. You know, here they were, warriors. You know, those Japanese, man, they, they were really in love with their, with their swords and all of their history and all of their, you know, baloney. And they underestimated our young people. You know why? Because we are basically a Christian nation. That's what, that was the difference are y'all with me now? Yeah. So let's look at a few verses here. John chapter 8. We're going to quote Jesus on this one. This is a good one right here. John 8, 44. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and he's not, he's not trying to give in to them. He's not trying to negotiate with them. He's not trying to reach across the aisle and come to an agreement. He told the, he told the Pharisees, he said, in verse 44, you are, are of your father, the devil. Woo! 
Do you remember when George Bush stood up in the White House uh, after 9-11 and pleading for the Muslims for us not to persecute Muslims? He says, well, we're all children of the same God. You lying fool. What is wrong with you? That's not true. They're not, we're not, the world is not all children of God. He's the creator, but he's not the father of anybody but you and I. Born again, that's why we had to be born again. We had to come out from the sovereignty and the fatherhood of the devil. We had to have a new father. I got one, did you? But they don't. Yeah, we, we had, had a whole war after 9-11, supposedly to, to stop terrorism by ending it over there. And what did we do? We imported it. We got it living here. Jihad is living here now. Uh, yeah, I'd say we're at war. I'd say we're at war. I'm not afraid. Why? Because I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. He who are of your father, the devil, and the lusts or desires of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. So that's what we need to know about the devil. He was a murderer. He murdered the human race by taking eternal life away from them. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden, they lost eternal life. They, he murdered them. And he murdered all of us. Murdered every man, woman, and child ever born after that because we were all born into darkness. He's a murderer from the beginning. And then as soon as Adam and Eve, you know, after they fell, they had children. And, you know, the Cain and Abel. I mean, you know, you got Cain, the first murder right there. It didn't take him long to pervert and to twist Mankind from where they started. This is Jesus talking. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Father of lies. Father of lies. All right. <clears throat> And, of course, we know in Revelation 12 that Satan was cast out of heaven. He was cast out. That's kind of, you know, that's kind of cloudy by itself. We don't quite understand what he's doing there. What is Satan doing there? But he wasn't, you know, he, <clears throat> he progressed into becoming Satan. Satan means accuser. It means really, literally, it means slanderer. And so you have to get into the Bible, and I don't, I don't have time to get into the details, but you can read it for yourself in Isaiah chapter 14, 12 through 16, and Ezekiel 28, 13 to 19. If you read those verses, you'll find out that the devil was, uh, was named Lucifer, which means day star. He was in charge of praise and worship. He was a created being. God created him originally as his chief cherub, his, his angel in charge of praise and worship. That's why he loves to get into music and pervert music. Our children's brains are rotting out of them for listening to the trash. You better take over your child's cell phones and their computers and not let them listen to everything that's out there because some of it is poisonous. A lot of it is. A lot of it's even sound. Some of the pop music sounds real innocent, but it's not. Better, you better be careful. It's not all the rap music. It's not all rap, you know, pretty much no rap music because it's filled with curse words and uh, degradation of women and everything you can think of. It's the most gosh awful most of it is. And then you get into pop music, which is, you know, it sounds good, but it's all, it's from the, de the devil is taking the music. He's, get, he's capturing our children. And he, it talks about he had all these beautiful stones upon him, and he had these pipes where he could sing, and, and he got to thinking that he was better than God, greater than God, and yet he, he didn't have anything that God didn't give him. He didn't have it of himself. God gave it to him. God created him that way. You, you find that out in, in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Ezekiel. You find out that he had a kingdom on the earth that he did, uh, did, he talked about the merchandise of his traffic. He had businesses that he conducted. He was the God of the earth. What do you mean? I know that's sounding kind of crazy. This is before 
the lights went out. The lights went out on the earth. When did that happen? Well, I'll just give you, Jesus said that I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So, my, Luke 10, 18, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So if he was cast out to the earth, he came down like lightning. And when he hit the earth, which was his kingdom, you can just hear God say, oh, you want a kingdom? I'll give you one. I'll give you a kingdom to rule over. And he ruled over this black, dark hole of a planet that went into darkness instantly. They're finding these mastodons. They dig them up, prehistoric elephant-looking things that are bigger than elephants, and they've got food in their bellies. How could that possibly be? They were freeze-dried. They were just frozen just instantly. The lights went out. Catastrophic damage was done to an old earth. That's why people get all hung up on, on fossils. They get all hung up on timelines and carbon dating and everything. This earth is a lot older than 5,000 years. There was a pre-Adamic creation. Pastor, where are you? are going loud, crazy. Well, you know, it is a theory. I'll have to admit, I can't prove it, but you can't prove it didn't happen. Let's look at Genesis. I, we're going to have to go back to Genesis. Come on back to Genesis real quick. Well, you need to know this so you'll understand how things work. Otherwise, you get all into, look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning... God created the heaven and the earth. Stop there. Now, what, does God create mess? Does he create chaos? He created the heavens and the earth, and it was perfect. That's when L Lucifer had charge. There were pre-Adamic creatures here. We're finding their Cro-Magnon man and all of that kind of thing. They find these creatures that, I'm not saying they're humans, but that's where demons come from. They're the spirits of the pre-Adamic creations. Are you with me now? Oh, you're looking at me. I said, that's a theory. You don't have to believe it. That's what I believe. Because demons are not angels. No, demons are a much lower spirit being, much lower and much smaller and much weaker than an angel. An angel, an evil angel, that's, that's a mean motor, motor scooter. Somebody like Michael has to fight one of them. They're the ones that are floating in the atmosphere in Ephesians chapter 6, principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in the heavenly places. That's what those are. Those are, those are a few of the angels, and the rest of the angels are held in chains until the time of tribulation. They're going to be loosed during the seven years of tribulation. Those evil angels have been held in reserve, and they're going to be roaming the earth. We're going to be gone. Glory to God. Glad I don't have to look at one of them all right so so when 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 he hit the earth it all went out well he had to be here because he tempted Adam and Eve right he tempted Eve in the garden and what was he, he was a serpent evidently he was upright he wasn't on his belly because when he did tempt him then God cursed him and said on your belly you're gonna you're gonna crawl Let's, think, let's, let's read our Bibles and understand that the devil is a real entity. He's, a, he's an angelic being. And so, <clears throat> thank God we've been redeemed. Amen? Amen? So he had nothing to be uh, proud about. That was his whole sin was pride and the idea that he could usurp God. That's pretty wild. Pretty wild. And, you know, angels don't have redemption. They have no forgiveness. Once they sin, it's over with. Oh, it makes you, it makes you thank God for our covenant that we have, see. We have a blood covenant. We're not like them. All right, let's, I'm going to give you four facts here. I know your head is spinning. So, all right, go back to Genesis. In the beginning, God created everything perfect. And then it says, and the earth was without form and void. You could say, word was, the earth became without form and void. Without form and void is the Hebrew word tohu vobahu, which means discombobulated, upside down, inside out. It's just a mess. It's a hot mess. That's a modern, a modern 
euphemism would be a hot mess. It became a hot mess. Actually, in that case, it was a cold mess. Very cold. It became a cold mess. So what was that? See, there was a gap. So then when, when God then, in the fullness of time, when it came time to have man back on the earth, he, he, let's make a man. He said, okay, let's make a man just like ourselves. We've got these angels that didn't work too well with them. Let's make a man just like ourselves. And let them have dominion over this coal thing, and let's remake this coal thing. So they remade it. And he, basically the creation story is a recreation. He had to get the, the atmosphere taken care of. He had to get the seas in the right place. He had to get the mountains moved around, the land masses. He had to get seed-bearing uh, trees and, and grasses. He had, to do, he had to repair all of the damage that had happened from the judgment of Lucifer and the evil angels. And he remade it, and he made it inhabitable for his creation, Adam. And then he tells Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Replenish. Not plenish, replenish. In other words, start over again. Get some more people on here. The other ones are gone. Y'all, y'all, I mean, y'all just you read your Bible. This is, now, you know, you don't have to believe any of this. If you, it's not written in the Bible. Okay, I understand it's not written, but it's implied. I happen, to, I happen to believe that's exactly how it happened. I haven't been able to find any fault with it for 43 years that I heard it. I look at it, I meditate on it, and I think, you know, that's probably what happened. I have the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. I think if I was on the wrong track. I've had people that almost want to fight me to th say that the, the earth is only 5,000 years old. Well, that's not true. The earth is a lot older. Why, why hit your head against a wall when God shows you how it, could re how it really happened? All right. So four facts about the devil. And I want you to be able to remember these and help people that are ignorant. Because I'm convinced this. If you, if you don't know there is a devil, or, and then number two, you don't know how to confront deception, you're just doomed. Because he's going to win on the, on the deception war. He is a deceiver. Uh, number one, he's a fallen angel. He's in the angelic class of being. That means he is not omni omnipresent. See, God is omnipresent. The Holy Ghost is here and the Holy Ghost is there. And the Holy Ghost is on the other side of the earth. And the Holy Ghost is everywhere. But not the devil. The devil can only be in one place at one time. He's an angelic class. We're not in the angelic class. We're in the God class. So we're a higher form of spirit being. That doesn't mean that we're more powerful. It means, though, but we have more authority over him. All right? And so he's not omnis omniscient. In other words, all-knowing. He's not all-powerful, omnipotent. He's not. And he cannot read your mind. The devil can't read your mind. He can't tell the future. We think the devil can fit. No, he doesn't know what the future is. He can, I'm going to tell you, he can predict the future because he knows the past. He's been around a while. And he's got cohorts. We call them familiar spirits, spirits that have hung with your family line. They go back to grandma and grandpa, great-grandpa, great-great-great-great-great, all the way to your family line's beginnings. There's demon powers that hang around your family and they hitchhike down through the centuries uh, you know when somebody dies you know and then they hop on whoever's available in your family that's why infirmity runs in families heart disease runs in families diabetes runs in families mental disease I've known families where, where suicide ran in families what is it it's a familiar spirit it's a demon power. If you know your enemy, you don't have to succumb to that. You can break the power of that thing. You can say, no, it might have been on Grandpa, but it ain't on me. Hallelujah. He's a fallen angel. All right. He can't read your mind. He can't, can't tell the future. All right. The second thing is he's a murderer, John 8, 44. He's a murderer. And so everybody that advocates for abortion, they're, they're of their father, the devil. There is no agreement between Christianity and abortion. It can't be. 
It's murder, plain, old, plain and simple. You're, you're taking a life in vain. The blood of these children is crying in the earth. And it's the cause of a lot of trouble in our country and all over the world, a lot of it. I mean, that blood cries. It's innocent. You look at the, uh, the history of uh, Rome, Persia, all of these, all of these ma massive kingdoms that have fallen. You'll find abortion, you'll find mistreatment of children, and you'll find homosexuality and sexual excess. You'll find it. It's the beginning of the end. Because God has implanted in every human being a sense of decency, a sense of what is right and wrong. Even if they're not saved, they have a sense. They, have a, they know down on the inside that things are, should be a certain way. And when they're not, it's rebellion. Are Y'all are looking at me kind of strange, but you've got to know these things. He's a murderer. He stole eternal life. From the whole human race. I mean, he's not here to inconvenience you. He's not here to give you a bad hair day. He's not here to give you a flat tire. Ah, the devil gave me a flat tire. No, he didn't. Quit saying the devil, the devil, the devil. He's not, in, um, uh, he's not omniscient. He's not omnipotent. He can't be everywhere at one time. And besides that, where, do you think he's going to hang out trying to inconvenience you? He's one person. He's one entity. Where is he going to be? Well, he's probably at the Oval Office right now. He's probably having an, an audience with Z or, you know, Putin. He's not, he's not hanging around you. No, he's got demons that can hang around you. He's got, he's got emissaries. He's got people he can send to mess you up. But they're not here to give you a bad hair day. They're not here to steal your, your parking place at the mall. They're here to kill you. If they can't kill you, then they're here to stop you from being effective in your ministry and render you ineffective. Are you with me now? All right, number three, he deceives the whole world. That's what the Bible says. He deceives the whole world. We've seen it more and more. And his children are just like him. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. He has children that are just like him. I was asking, you know, I forgot what thing happened, and it was just so crazy. I mean, just anybody with common sense could, could see the truth of the matter. And I said, God, why can't they see this? Is just, it's not even worth arguing about. This, these people argue about things that are just, how can you argue about what a woman is and what a man is? How can you do that? How can you argue? He said, the truth is not in them. Well, the truth is not in him, see? The truth is not in the devil. So the, the truth is not in most of the world. Truth is not in them. But we have the spirit of truth in us. All right, define Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at verse uh, 2. Well, verse 1, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. See, that's what happened to me. I was dead. I was quickened. I was made alive by the Holy Ghost. And wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So notice what the Bible calls the world, calls them the children of disobedience. Calls, and that's what, what, that's what you all were. That's what I was. I was a child of disobedience before I got saved. So we all came from the same place. It's not like we look down our nose at the world. No, we have a message for them. We have the gospel. We have the good news. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to, li listen, transgender person, you don't have to live in this degradation. You know it's terrible. You know you're not really happy. You're trying to put all this stuff on. You're trying to be so extreme, and you're, you're just fooling yourself, but you're not fooling me. It's wrong. You know it's wrong. You know it's a lie. The 13-year-old girl is suing her parents because they had her breasts removed. And what kind of an idiot would do that to their child? They, they, they shouldn't have children. But that's where we're headed. And you've got, you've got an entire large portion of the medical 
establishment that's contributing. You know, Texas Children's Hospital has been doing this kind of stuff. So when I heard that the Astros had signed up, or was it to take one of the sports teams, signed them up as a sponsor, I said, you're so stupid. You know, that's why, that's why our attorney general is under fire, because he's investigating that's right. these big guys. No, so they're trying to investigate him. It's the same as Trump. It's just all a bunch of made-up stuff. All right. So the whole world is deceived. His children are like him. He's the father of lies. He's a slanderer. He's the slanderer. That's what they do. They slander us. They call us bigots. They call us Nazis. They call us fascists. You know, they don't even know what a fascist is. If you're going to call me a fascist, why don't you look up what it means? It's so stupid. Really? You don't have a brain. You can call me a lot of names, but you call me a fascist? That's nuts. Nuts. So they're slanderers. And he's a slanderer. All right. And then the last one, Ephesians 1, 22. And this is talking about what God has done for the church. And God has, verse 22, has put all things under his feet. Talking about the body of Christ. Where are the feet? They're in the body. Where are the feet? They're on the earth. So God has put everything under our feet. He's put the devil under our feet. Amen. Under our feet means we have authority over him. We have the power to bind or prevent or we have the power to loose or to permit. Whatever we permit will be permitted. Whatever we prevent will be prevented. It's up to us. Praying that God does something about this mess is a vain prayer. We, God has already done everything he's going to do. He sent Jesus to the cross. He died. He rose from the dead. And he gave his church all authority in heaven and in earth. Yeah. We have all that we need to stop deception and defeat it. Amen. Praise God. Come on, lift your hands right now. Glory to God. Woo! All these vain prayers. They don't know how to pray. They don't know their authority. It's just wasting time. I can't be part of it. I won't be part of it. I will not go down to the courthouse or the city hall or anything like that and be part of a prayer meeting with, with Second Chronicles 7, 14. I'm just not going to do it. That's the Old Testament. It doesn't even apply to us. It doesn't apply to us. It's not even the subject matter. This is the subject matter right here. I just read it. He put it, on, he put it all under our feet. So in Revelation 12, it says, We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What we say. So the word overcome means, listen, uh, over, overcome means conquer prevail, win the case. Means win the case. There are some cases that we are going to win this year. There are some cases we're going to win in the next 2024. We're going to win some cases. I said we're going to win some cases. And so this overcoming, see, we overcome how? By knowing our blood covenant rights. You've got to know what the power of the blood. I've been saying this all year. We've been, this is a year of God's power. And it's centered on knowing what the blood has done, what the blood is doing, and what the blood will do. It's all centered on that. This whole message is centered on what the blood has already accomplished. That's why it's so vain to ask God to do anything. He's already done it. So knowing our rights and privileges of our blood covenant... And then number two, answering every lie with God's word. See, this is what's not done. We let lies go unanswered. We let untruth go unchallenged. We must expose it. We have to recognize it. We have to expose it. Then we have to disarm it. And then we can defeat it. It, it must be answered. I mean, we have to answer it at the school board meetings. We have to answer it at, at, the, at Congress. We have to go up there and inconvenience ourselves and go testify against some of these gosh-awful bills they're trying to put into law 
or testify for the good bills. We got a lot of good bills passed or just passed some good bills last week and, uh, and all of that. And so the church has got to be more vocal. The word of our testimony. And then there's that last one. They love not their lives unto the death. What does that mean? It just means obedience. We have to obey God. I have to obey God when he told me to wake up the church. I didn't even understand what that meant. In 1999, that's been 24 years ago. I didn't understand it, but I obeyed it as best I could. And as time has gone on, it's been 24 years of unfolding. This is what I'm talking about. No one has pastored a church in the last days. God had to give me this revelation. He had to give me this, this unfolding and confirmation as I took every step, every step. And it just seemed like forever nobody would listen. It seemed like forever nothing was happening. Well, you know what? It's beginning to work. It's beginning to, I'm telling you, people are waking up all over this city, all over this state, all over this county. People are waking up all over this nation. I'm telling you right now, things are changing. And there's a whole lot of reason to celebrate. Come on, lift your hands. Defeating deception. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Next week, we're going to talk about defeating demonic tactics. Defeating demonic tactics. And uh, I believe you'll get a lot out of these messages. And uh, you'll be able to help others. There's a lot of ignorance out there in the church. And uh, it'll help you also to minister to people. When you know who you are in Christ, when you know what you have in Christ, the name of Jesus. Well, we've got supernatural weapons. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah glory to God. Let's just lift our hands this morning. Father, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you. The spirit of truth abides in us forever. We thank you for the word of truth. Thank you, Lord. We're recognizing, exposing, disarming, and defeating deception. Mm -hmm.